Okay, so we're entering now another part of the exhibition. I uh, a signal earlier that Ryoko Ono was going against, not against, but reframing many conventions. Music, painting, theater, poetry, also architecture. In order to enter the exhibition, you can choose to enter the exhibition in a very unconventional way. One of the major pieces in this room is called entrance. Entrance, like being in a trance, if you want, or entering, entering the exhibition. All the threshold, the access to the exhibition, are not conventional. You have a tiny, tiny, skinny corridor with mirror on both sides that project your own image into an endless space of reproduction. You have a, a, a very low, narrow threshold and you have to actually bend over, crawl on your knees, on your belly, on your back to go through it, to enter. You have stairs that you have to climb and then go down the slides like a, a child to enter a little kind of uh, 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 dog house door and you have a truncated perspective uh, a corridor that forces you to make yourself more compact. Or you have a curtain, a series of curtains that you have to push through. By doing that, she's again forcing us to rethink something which is very, very simple that we do every day. When you go to work, when you go home, when you enter the kitchen, when you enter the bathroom, you open a door. It's a very simple gesture that we do every day without thinking about it. In order to enter the exhibition, you have to make a decision first. So she force you or invite you again to participate. And she, if you choose one of the unconventional way, she invites you to rethink the way your body move through the space. You have to lower yourself, you might encounter pain, but that's also part of her work, like in cut piece. She is inviting us to reconsider the way we perceive our bodies in space through the model of architecture. And we will see that there are in this exhibition few pieces about architecture. But also something that we wanted to show in this exhibition is that she has a relationship with architecture. One of the first pieces in the show is actually, uh, for me, a very dear piece. It's called The Penal Colony, after the Franz Kafka novel. And it's a collaboration that she had with the Pritzker Prize winning architecture, Arata Izozaki. Together, they design a prison, a prison cell, a room made out of ice, a room of incarceration, of control, freedom control made out of ice. And you have, a body, you have photos at the entrance. But with time, of course, the ice is going to melt. And as the ice melts, the wall is going to disappear. And when the wall of a prison disappears, you have access to freedom. And that, for me, is a very important idea in Yoko Ono and, in many ways, a complex idea. But, as usual, in her work, she finds a very simple, direct way to talk about it. It's difficult. Why? Because, well, incarceration is complicated. Where she lives in the United States, there is an issue, protest against massive incorporation mass incorporation in society. It's also a very utopian idea that maybe we don't need this kind of control. Actually, she created with her husband, John Lennon, a country, an utopian country called Utopia. And here, actually, if you look at this door here, you have a little sign on the door. If you open the door, you have access to the Utopian embassy, where you can actually meet the Utopian ambassador, an ambassador for Utopia. So she has a relationship with architecture, of course, a distorted architecture, an architecture that reconsiders architecture in the way she did with painting, the way she did with music and poetry. The piece that you have here 
text again, as we saw with grapefruit, our series of instructions to build houses. The piece called Piece Dedicated to George Macunas, the Phantom Architect. George Macunas, we just talked about it earlier, was the, the force, the leader of the Fluxus movement. He was himself trained as an architect, hasn't built much or hasn't built anything. And the piece itself is really in the spirit of Fluxus and Macunas. There are invitation, instruction to build houses that defy conventional architectural wisdom. I'm going to read you one of them. Build a house that serves only to make way for the rain. A house that makes way for the rain is a house that doesn't protect you. A house that makes way for the wind was a house that doesn't have a physical materiality. It's immaterial architecture. Many of his pieces of architecture, of his instruction, follow a tradition that the artist Yves Klein invented or explored about this idea of immaterial architecture, architecture that follow and respect the elements, air, water, and light. Talking about light, which is a very important part of our work, we have two pieces here that bring light into awareness. Here, hanging in front of this window, I don't know if you can see it on camera. It's actually quite interesting because visitors come and it's almost invisible because it's almost absolutely immaterial. It's called painting to let the evening light go through. You have a piece of glass hanging only with the text that tells you to painting to let the evening light go through. And when you think about the history of painting, again, if you go to the Met, if you go to the Louvre, how many paintings are about sunset and sunrise? That's Yoko Ono version of Turner. 